Hello everyone, my name is Mark Dory. I'm engineering manager here at the Consulab and today I'm here to show you the latest fruit of our development team. It's the Consulink GM 1.4 liter engine trainer and air conditioning stop start. With the new features added onto this engine bench, you can now take your whole classroom out for a road test without ever leaving the classroom. You can demonstrate a fully functional stop start perform a stall test, which in effect is a load test for the engine. And this can be done since you see we've added two pedals on it, the brake and the gas pedal, along with the shifter, which allows you to perform all the tests we talked about. Another major improvement is the integration of the Consulink student learning platform, replacing our traditional fault box. The pre-programmed case studies and scenarios provide students with examples of customer complaints. When a student activates a case study, the product reconfigures itself and presents the same symptoms as described in this case study. For example, Mr. Smith walks in and says, my car is running poorly. When a student activates a case study, you'll immediately hear the engine start to stutter. The students can now autonomously perform diagnostics and troubleshooting activities with their instrumentation, along with the counseling provided information, such as breakout box pinout, diagrams, user manual, and all safety related information. All right, so now let's perform a stall test. So hit the brakes and put it in park, start the engine. Now release the brake, put it in drive. There we go. Now you see the green light for the stall test is lit, so it enables the stall test. In order to put a load on the engine now, I'll hit both pedals. So the brake is already depressed. I hit the gas pedal, and I hear the engine rev up. to boost pressure increase. So the engine is presently under load. And if we put too much load onto it, then the wheel will slip and it will disengage and hear the blowout valve. Just like that. Now the test has been disabled. During the time the red light flashes. Another way to bring your students onto the road with you is to perform a start-stop test. So hit the brakes. Start the engine, put it in drive, and we need to travel a certain distance, so we'll hit the, hit the gas, hold it there for a few seconds. As you can see on the scan tool, there's many criteria required to perform a stop start test. This should be far enough, so we'll hit the brake pedal now, and the engine should stop. Uh, AC being one of the criteria required for a start-stop, if we turn the AC back on without releasing the brake pedal, which I'll do right now, then we'll see that the engine will restart by, on itself. See the AC request went back to yes. That's why the engine restarted. Now let's perform a case study. Let's try case study number three. Case study three, engine starts, installs, and will not restart. From the student point of view, the only information provided is customer states the vehicle's engine quit running and will not start back up. It cranks fine, but will not start, along with the recommendation to follow the manufacturer's troubleshooting procedure. Now the student can start his diagnostics procedure and start the case study. Let's start the engine. The engine starts fine, it'll run for a while, and then stall. At which point we'll try to restart it. There we go, let's try to restart it. No start. All right, this is what happened to the student, so now he can start the diagnostics procedure and try to locate the fault. Now from a teacher's point of view, Let's go back up here, instructor case studies, same case study number three, engine starts and stalls and will not restart. You get the same information to start the case study, however a lot more information is provided on what fault was exactly, where it was inserted in the engine, 
how on what components were affected, how they were interact with each other, and also by following the manufacturer's troubleshooting procedures, what DTC codes you can expect to find. Additionally, you can go into the wiring diagrams and find out exactly where the fault was located. In our case, fault number three was located between X333 and the relay on pin two. So this is the exact location of the fault and you can discuss this with your student once he's finalized his investigations. Now if we go back to the student's situation, his case study, number three, once he's done with diagnosticing his fault, he'll come back to you and say, this is what I found. If he's found the correct one, then you can tell him, stop the case study, proceed to the next one. So console link removes the fault from the engine. To demonstrate that, let's start the car. Everything's back to normal, so the student can now proceed to the following case study. The student can also consult the wiring diagrams available within console links. So here we have the complete wiring diagram available. You can also pinch and zoom on specific components depending on what he's looking for for his diagnostics. Completing this product is an extensive training system providing over 75 to 100 hours of instruction. The instructor manual contains product features, some theory and complete description of student assignments. The student manual contains similar information with over 39 detailed assignments and case studies, all correlated to ASC and NATIF, facilitating student engagement and self-paced learning. Also included is a live product training session. Now let's talk about Consulink. It's our student learning platform designed to facilitate teacher and student interaction with our products. It replaces our fault box, but does so much more. These are the menus available to a student. Operation manual, in which we have the operation manual complete. Case studies, several case studies are available to the student. Wiring diagrams, where we can scroll down to see any portion of the wiring diagram we need. Zoom in if required to see very finite details on it. Breakout box, definition of all the pins. Attach wires and components, connector, location on the pins. Component locator of this product, so all the components with a complete list of all the components present on this product. Scenario number, we'll get to later. And if any videos are available, they will be located here. Additionally, several menus are available for the instructors. Presently, we are in student mode. If we switch to teacher mode, these menus now become available. We have instructor's guide, which is similar, but much, much more detailed than the student manual. We have case studies from an instructor point of view, a much more extensive list, and also we can create our own case studies. Wiring diagrams with faults, in this case, we see a different wire diagram, which we have exact fault location on the product. And fault insertion. As with previous products, we can insert manual faults, and this is where we would do it. For example, we insert fault number six, and we say a nice combination would be fault 11, crankshaft. So let's say we like this, and we want to create a case study with it. So we have a button here, create case study from active faults. So let's create this case study, call it title, we'll call it fault uh, 22. Okay, description, we'll call it uh, gizmo. And instructions, debug. And we'll save this, custom case study was successfully created. Okay, what does this mean? Let's go back to the teacher menu, case studies instructor. Now at the bottom of this list, we have teacher created case studies. So we'll click on this and we have our new case study here, fault 22, called gizmo and debug. And it also created a scenario number, 6623. And we'll use that from a student point of view in a minute. 
So now we have a complete case study, it's saved in the system, ready to go. Now let's go see what the student sees from his point of view. First let's reset the faults because the faults are still present in the system. We'll switch to student mode, case studies, oh sorry, scenario number, scenario number had was 6623, confirm. Now we have an active scenario number. So the student doesn't know what he's entered, doesn't know what the faults are, so he has to diagnose, come up with the answers and consult with the teacher. So if you have a series of these numbers, you could create a lab or create a series of exercise and have students learn in an autonomous fashion for several hours trying to debug these different codes. Now for instructor-led lessons. These are different from case studies. They don't create an actual fault, but rather simulate an abnormal condition in order to visualize a phenomena. Presently, we're in teacher mode. We have, let's go into case studies, ECT sensor. Uh, let's try this one. Engine is running rich. Now in this situation, we have the engine is running rich because it affects the oxygen sensor, which has now been replaced by an artificial signal. And the, so, but the values you'll be measuring on the breakout box and the scanner will be accurate and coherent with the situation you see on hand. However, if you measure at the actual sensor, you'll measure the standard engine values. The instructions and case studies provided are the equivalent of having a team of seasoned expert peers having done all the preparatory work for you in your lab. You walk in and at the push of a button, you're ready to start. As you have seen, this product can simplify a teacher's life through the use of the Consulink student learning platform. It also allows to perform road tests inside a classroom, such as stop start and stall test. For additional information, contact us or consult consulab.com.